Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Classic Gamer 74, episode 13, Rare and Valuable Atari Games, part 1. I am your host, Anthony Ventrillo, and filling in this week is my friend Humphrey. Hello. Unfortunately, Larry the Lion got in trouble and he's on punishment with his wife, so Humphrey's going to fill in for the next couple episodes. Jolly good. Now, how does a video game become rare and valuable? Well, back in the 80s, at the height of the Atari mania, a lot of game companies just kind of appeared out of nowhere, and they put out, um, sometimes, games in very limited quantities, or some companies actually didn't get large distribution for their games, and therefore they became collector's items. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that just because a game is rare and valuable, it doesn't mean the game is very good. Yes, we're going to find that out several times throughout this list. So are you ready to get started? You know it. All right, let's hit it. First game on our list today is Atlantis 2 by Imagic. Now, several of you are probably thinking, well, I played Atlantis and I bought just about get every game by Imagic and I don't remember ever there being Atlantis 2. Well, there was one, but it was not readily available to everybody. Exactly. In order to get Atlantis 2, a person had to get an exceptionally high score, send that score into a magic, and then they, in turn, would send you a copy of this game, Atlantis 2, which in effect was actually Atlantis 1, just a lot faster and a lot harder. And then, those who had the Atlantis 2 were able to send in a, cop a picture of the their high score, and then they, of course, would end up getting an award or a prize of some sort showing that they had the highest Atlantis score of all time. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how many people got this disc. I believe it's less than a few hundred. The game itself is almost identical looking to the regular Atlantis cartridge. The only difference is they put a little tagger on the box that said Atlantis 2. And this game is known to go for a couple hundred bucks, or a hundred dollars, excuse me, on eBay. The next one on our list is Red Sea Crossing from 1983 by Steve Stack Incorporated uh, by the Christian game company Inspirational Video Concepts. The game itself was not available in stores. As a matter of fact, the only way you could get it was through an advertisement in a Christian Living magazine. This is a copy of the advertisement itself. Here is a fan's depiction of what the box for the game would have looked like had there actually been a box. The game itself was very rare, even in its time. Only about 50 copies of the game were made, and it's been known to go up to $12,000 on eBay. All right, here's a look at the game itself. Uh, you are Moses, trying to get across the Red Sea, and you have some obstacles that kind of pop up out of nowhere. What these obstacles are isn't exactly clear, uh, but there's several of them, kind of creative ones. You have like arrows that if you jump up, it'll kill you. So you have so many lives um, at your disposal, and it can get kind of fun, but it's just it's a regular side scroller that really you know isn't that exciting for the most part but you know i can kind of see how you know uh, christian parents would wouldn't mind getting this game for their kids because it's not it's totally non-violent there's no killing or anything well except for that when moses got killed but other than that it's a totally non-violent game although to be honest i cannot imagine spending twelve thousand dollars on this game still uh check out get the rom your get the rom you can get that on atariage.com and check check it out it's kind of a an interesting game, but like I said, definitely not worth $12,000. Next up, we have Air Raid by Menavision. This was the only game that this company created uh, before going bankrupt. One of the things that set this game apart, though, was this very interesting cartridge that they had with a handle on it. Not many other game companies came up with this concept. Yeah, there were a couple others, but I don't think any American-based companies actually did. All right, as you can see, it's your basic kind of space invader sort of game where you're defending your planet, or whatever it is, from these weird-looking aliens. Uh, one of the things I didn't like about this game, to tell you the truth, Humphrey, was it was really hard to hit those other ships. I mean, you're blasting and blasting, and if you don't hit them dead center, like, look at that, see? How did I miss that? You have to hit the thing dead center, and even then sometimes, I mean, it's kind of glitchy, if you ask me. It's probably a good thing that the company did go out of business before they made any other crap like this. You've got to point there. I mean, just because a game is rare and valuable doesn't mean it's any good. 
Oh yeah, and we'll see that several times throughout this video. Well, the game itself may not be any good, but the price it goes on eBay is going to make somebody a lot of money. Recently, somebody was selling a copy of this game for $3,999. Wow, that's a lot for a cartridge. Yes, especially for a game that isn't any good. Next game is Eli's Ladder. Eli's Ladder is an educational game aimed at children where math problems need to be solved to help Eli and his crew climb a ladder to a spaceship so they can journey to the moon. The game included a wall chart and stickers designed to help motivate children progress through the problems. This is one of the rarest Atari 2600 games and apparently saw fairly limited distribution. Um, it was made by a company called SimAge, uh, which was a Christian game company, and this game has been known to go for hundreds on eBay just for the cartridge and up to a thousand or more if you have all the parts with it, like the stickers and the wall chart. Next up, we have Pepsi Invaders. Uh, this game was created by Atari. It was commissioned by Coca-Cola, who gave it to their Atlanta employees. Roughly about 125 copies of this game were made. Uh, it's not technically a prototype, but it was also not a commercially available game either. All right, so let's check this out. This game is also known as Coke Wins. Um, this game was made at the height of the Cola Wars in the 80s. Any of you that were, were around back in that time remember it was Coke and Pepsi just duking it out and taking pot shots at each other. Well, Coke is actually was literally taking shots at Pepsi. Um, it would have been kind of cool to have this game back in the day. I was a big Space Invaders fanatic, as were pretty much all my friends. Um, I really can't honestly tell you whether I preferred Coke or Pepsi. I, you know, my parents, I just drank whatever my parents bought. And to be honest, I don't even drink cola anymore. I'm, uh, I'm a team man myself now trying to lose some weight, so I cut out the cola. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, this game is readily available all over the internet in ROM form, so check out AtariAge.com and download it and try it yourself. Occasionally copies of this do pop up on eBay from time to time. You can see this gentleman is selling a special box edition of it for $400, which is about the average price of what it goes for nowadays. Alright, next up we have The Music Machine, a game by a company called Sparrow, which was a Christian music company that uh, only released these games in Christian bookshops. It apparently is based on an album by a band named Candle. All right, so in this game, you are two children named Stevie and Nancy who are holding a basket and you're trying to catch uh, things that are being dropped to you. It's kind of similar to uh, Kaboom, uh, except you're catch instead of catching bombs, you're catching love, patience, gentleness, faith, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, and self-control. Um, it's a very positive message, and it's actually kind of a fun game. Um, I played it myself for quite a while, and I really enjoyed it. It's again, it's easier than Kaboom, and at least you don't have you're not be having dro bombs dropped on you. Recently, a copy of this game was for sale on eBay, and it was going for $7,500, still in the package. Next up, we have Mangia by Spectrovision. Alright, the story behind this game is you are a little Italian boy, and your mama is uh, giving you lots of food. The problem is you can't possibly eat that much food, so you've got to toss some of it to the dog and the cat. Um, unfortunately, you, uh, have to be, the dog and cat don't show up all the time, and when they do show up, you gotta toss the food to them, and if your mama catches you tossing the food, she's gonna feed you even more food. Now, um, the problem here is, is that the dog is never in the right location when you try to throw the food, and so she, you end up eating more food than you could possibly eat, or should eat, and the cat is the one who actually saves the day most of the time. But that annoying beeping sound just drives me crazy. 
Ugh, anyway. Now, if the more you eat, uh, as you see, the bigger you get. Well, if you eat too much, you, you explode. You've got to be kidding. Nope, I'm quite serious. Who thought this game up? I, I really couldn't tell you. Recently, this game was on eBay for $850, not in the package. Next up, we have Chase the Chuck Wagon. Now, any of you that were around in the 80s probably remember uh, Chuck Wagon uh, Dog Food by Ralston Perina. And the marketing idea behind this was the dog would chase the chuck wagon into a cabinet. And in the cabinet, the dog would find dog food. Well, somebody at Purina thought that this would be a great idea for a video game. Alright, so in this game you are the dog. And you are trying to meander your way through this really badly designed maze. And a cat keeps hitting you and when it gets you it freezes you in your spot. And you have to try to avoid the human and make it to the chuck wagon to get your dog food. That, you're right, that is a very, very poorly designed maze. Oh, you haven't seen anything yet. Uh, we're only going to show you the first uh, maze, but they get really difficult and almost impossible to get through. Um, a lot of people consider this to be one of the worst video games ever made. And then once you make it, you have to let the bowl drop to just the right spot so the dog can get his dog food. Hooray. Although the game was pretty much panned by fans and uh, critics alike, it does tend to go for quite a hefty price sometimes on eBay. As you can see, this person is selling it for $599 with the box and the instructions. On a side note, it was made by Spectrovision, which is also uh, the company that made Mangia and lots of other rare games. Next up is a game called Gauntlet by Ansa Software. Alright, so here's the story behind Gauntlet. Uh, this comes out of the uh, instruction manual that came with it. You are the famous explorer, Sir Robert Wittenbottom. You have discovered an ancient civilization deep in the forest of a mysterious island. Since you are a likable chap, you have decided to induct your you. They have decided to induct you into the Council of Warriors. But first, you must run the gauntlet to prove that you are worthy of the honor. You are given three glasses of water. Your task is to use the water to extinguish as many of the ceremonial fires burning at various places within the gauntlet as you can before your water supply runs out. To successfully run the gauntlet, you must dodge, jump, and duck your way through the various obstacles and projectiles while remaining within the confines of the gauntlet. Any contact with an obstacle, projectile, or the gauntlet will trip you up and will cause you to spill water. You may stop and rest momentarily, but be careful. Running the gauntlet is, a thirst, is thirsty work and you may be tempted to take a drink. Now this game was only available through mail order, uh, so it had very little distribution and most people had never really heard of it until many years later. So uh, the game was extremely rare even back then. Next up by the same company, we have Malagai. Alright, the object of this game is to chase these aliens in a specific order in order to unlock this airlock and the ship that you were trapped in with them. Uh, kind of a fun game, very fast paced, although the sounds of those beeping will drive you insane, but still a very fun game uh, and one I would de highly recommend playing.
Both of these games were also made in double ender format, uh, much like the Xonix games that I discussed in a previous video. And you can see that they go for about $130, which is a good, pretty reasonable price, although individually the games can sometimes go up to 1000 And I've saved the best for last. This is the most valuable and considered the rarest video game in the world, and it is called Birthday Mania. And here's the story behind it, according to uh, a wiki article I found. Birthday Mania is an Atari 2600 game developed in 1984 by a young programmer named Anthony Tokar. The game itself never had any commercial release, but instead advertised the Newark Star-Ledger newspaper. Consumers would mail a check to Tokar and would receive the game personalized with their name on the title screen. The game featured many birthday-themed activities, including blowing out birthday candles and popping balloons. The game itself only sold somewhere from 10 to 15 copies, only one of which has been found and verified by Atari collector Jerry Grainer. In 2009, a copy of the game surfaced and was put up for sale, with the highest known offer being $6,500 though the offer was turned down by the seller. The game today is believed to be worth anywhere between $15,000 and $35,000. Although the ROM for this game has not been made readily available, a college student uh, studied the leaked footage that is available online of the game and created a homebrew version of it. Uh, you can check it out at the link that I have put in the description. And here is some footage of that homebrew version of Birthday Mania. Alright, so it's kind of a space shooter, I guess that's what you'd call it. Yeah, I guess that's a pretty good term, except for the fact that there's no spaceships. Right. So what you're doing is you're looking at it from the top view of, a, a, I guess that's supposed to be the kid's head, and you're blowing out these can lit candles that are coming towards you, so... Yeah, really exciting. Uh, but you have to think of it this way. I mean, when a child gets this game, got this game back in the day, and they saw their uh, name on the introduction, I mean, that, that was kind of cool, I suppose. Yeah, it was. I mean, it's, it's too bad, though, that, you know, it didn't get wider distribution. You know, I think the guy could have... Uh, it probably wouldn't be as valuable, I wouldn't think. But, I mean, a lot of kids probably would have loved it. I would have loved it. This would have been, like, the coolest birthday present I could have gotten at that time, you know, to see my name in a video game. I mean, that's pretty... I mean, what could be cooler than that, you know? This concludes this episode of Classic Gamer 74. Uh, I want to thank everybody for stopping by and for all the subscribers and all the likes and... The positive feedback I've been getting from everybody, I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed today's episode, please don't forget to give us a big like, um, share, and subscribe if you haven't yet. Also, don't forget to visit our friends at AtariAge.com and AtariProtos.com to hear the stories behind these games and others like them. And we will see you guys in part two where we discuss more of the rare and valuable Atari games out there. I'm Anthony Ventrillo, and I'm Humphrey the Wolf, and we will see you all next time. Until then, have a blessed day. Goodbye. And goodbye. See you all later.